Hello students, I am Sunil Kumar, PGT Commerce, Kendriya Vidyalaya Sectorate, Arkipurum. Let me welcome you to our another episode of Business Studies Class 12th. Students, in our previous episode, we have discussed about the formal organization and we'll be focusing on informal organization in our present episode. So, now what is the meaning of informal organization? The informal organization is that organization which is created within the formal organization. When the posts are created in an organization, the people from different part of the country or the world are coming in a single organization, then their interest will bring them together. The social groups will be formed within the functional organizational structure in the formal organization. And in this way, the creation of informal organization takes place. Students, now what are the advantages of informal organization? After getting the meaning of informal organization that it is created within the organization, it has many disadvantages and advantages. But the advantages are more than the disadvantages. The very first advantage is fast communication. In informal organization, the communication is very fast. If we compare it with formal organization, we find it takes a lot of time when the information is flowing from top to bottom and bottom to top. But in informal organization, there is no job position, there are no posts. As a result, the flow of information is very fast. You can understand this, like you are studying in a particular school. And after coming into the school, you are interacting with so many students. And once, when you are meeting with other students, you are forming a group. That group only is known as informal organization, which is established within the formal organization, that is your school. So here, the flow of information will be very fast among the students since there is no superior subordinate relationship existing between them. So if a teacher is telling something to a particular student or scolding that particular student, the information reaches to so many students very, very quickly. So that shows the flow of information in informal structure is much, much faster than of formal structure. The second advantage of informal organization is fulfillment of social needs. The one of the demerit of functional organizational structure was that it was not meeting the psychological satisfaction. It was not meeting the social interactions of the people. If the people are working in an organization, they need to get recognition from the persons who are working in that organization. They need to get recognized. They need to get respect. They need to get affection and love from the persons who are working in that organization. And only after that, they will be able to give their best they will be giving their 100% and they will be helping the organization in the attainment of its objectives. The third advantage of formal organization is correct feedback. In formal organization, once the question is asked from a subordinate about the superior, the subordinate will always be praising the superior, though he knows that there are some demerits in the superior. But because he is afraid of that, he is not telling the truth. But in informal organization, since there is no superior subordinate relationship, so whatever feedback in an organization we can get will be correct feedback. What employees feel about a particular person, about a particular employee, about a particular superior, they will be giving true and fair judgment of the same. So the correct feedback, if we would like to get, we can get it only with the help of informal organization. Students, now disadvantages of informal organization. The first disadvantage is spread rumors. Sometimes employees, in order to meet their group goals, they are going for false information. And once the false information is feed inside the group, it takes the form of rumors, which may affect adversely the interest of the organization. The second disadvantage is resistance to change. We know the human beings are resistant to change. They don't like changes taking place in the environment and they would not like to get changes within themselves. As a result, it is very, very difficult in the organization to introduce new changes as the employees are change averse. They are not accepting that. Let me give you an example of the same. Few years back, the banking system was operating manually basis. And there was a proposal that banking system 
should be fully computerized. But the people working in the banks, they were afraid of using the computer. But because they have heard about the computers, but they don't know how to use the computers. So they were opposing the requirement of the computers or the introduction of the computers in the banks. Similarly, in informal organization, because the people working in the organization have formed various groups, so they will be giving more importance to their groups rather than the interest of the organization, which brings resistance to change, which is not in the favor of the organization at all. The third disadvantage of informal organization is more emphasis on group interests. Within the formal organization, informal groups are formed. And once the groups are formed, they get powerful. If something is happening in the organization, and if it is not in the favor of that group, the group won't let it happen. They will go for the strike. They will just threat the management of the organization that if they are going to take some decision against them, they are going to go for the strike, which may hamper the production system and ultimately adversely affecting in the achievement of organizational goals. The last demerit in the field of informal organization is non-systematic working. In informal organization, there is no post created, no one is superior, no one is subordinate, no one can take order from anyone. As a result, there is no system of doing the work in the informal organization structure, which is the another demerit of informal organizational structure. So students, after understanding the formal organization and informal organization, you can easily facilitate the comparison between the formal and informal organization. And after this, let me begin with our another topic that is delegation of authority. What is delegation of authority? And how it affects the business organization? What is the meaning of delegation of authority and how it affects the operations of the business organization? Students, now let me first understand the meaning of delegation of authority. We all know a manager has to do a lot of job in the organization. But one person cannot do all the activities himself. So he has to ask his subordinates to do a part of his duty. That is known as delegation of authority. A superior is having say 10 tasks to do. Then the superior will be asking 10 subordinates to do that work. And each work will be given to a particular subordinate. And now that subordinate is responsible and accountable for carrying out that responsibility. But the superior has to ensure mere giving the responsibility to the employee will not help the organization. Rather, he has to give equal amount of authority to the subordinate so that the task can be completed very, very easily. Now, after getting the meaning of delegation, let me have the process involved in delegation. The first is responsibility. The superior, after understanding the capabilities and talent of his subordinates, he understands the nature of task he is going to delegate to a particular employee. He has to ensure that that employee is competent enough, having knowledge enough, having the professional and educational qualifications enough to meet out that responsibility. Because if the one's responsibility is given to the wrong employee, the work will not be completed in any way which may hamper organizational objectives. The second step in the process of delegation of authority is authority itself. Once the responsibility is given by the superior to the subordinate, he has to give equal amount of authority to him. For example, in a production unit, the production head has asked the foreman to complete the production of 500 units in a day. But he forgets to give him authority to take the raw material from the stores. And he was not allowed to get raw material from the stores. And once the raw material was not received by the foreman, so that particular day's target was not achieved. The production manager asked the foreman why it is not done. He said, you have given me the responsibility of meeting out the production, but you haven't given me equal amount of authority to take the raw material from the stores. And unless I'm getting the raw material from the stores, how I can meet the production target? So here, the superior has to ensure that once the responsibility is assigned to the people, assigned to the subordinate, he has to give equal amount of authority to that subordinate. And only then, he will be able to meet out his responsibility properly. The third and the most important step in delegation process is accountability. Once the responsibility 
and authority is given to the employee, he is completely accountable for completing that job. His responsibility is now fixed. If the work is not completed, he is accountable to the superior and he has to ask the, the subordinate why the work is not completed and the subordinate has to answer the reasons behind for the non-completion of the task. So here we have come to an end of the process involved in delegation. Students, in this episode we have understood what is informal organization and we can facilitate now the difference between the formal and informal organization. We have started with the delegation of authority and we have understood the meaning of delegation of authority. Now students, we have come to an end of the process of delegation which comprises of responsibility, authority and accountability and I think you have understood these concepts and in our next episode we will discuss about the importance of the delegation of authority along with decentralization so that you can easily facilitate the difference between the delegation of authority and the decentralization. Thank you. Thank you.